Hey y'all, this is Jeremiah, pastor at Centennial ARP. I wanted to pop in for another uh, a video encouragement for our week of prayer. This is uh, Thursday, so we're nearing the end. Uh, Rebecca, my wife, is going to have another video tomorrow to, uh, I think, kind of cap it off with uh, one final encouragement as well as maybe what it might mean for us to continue in these things. But I just wanted to very quickly talk about today's emphasis, which is prayer resources and maybe kind of the play on words that we were using with this emphasis. Because uh, really, if you look at the sheet that we have, and I hope that you do, it's on the fa uh, Facebook page that we have. Uh, you got it in the email as well as at church. Uh, today's emphasis is uh, prayer resources that are found in the Bible. The Psalms, for instance, are perfect prayers to God. Uh, one thing that I have found as I have sought to help people to grow in uh, their concept and practice of prayer is that, um, is that too often prayer is desired, but the words become rote. Uh, they, they become uh, uh, something that's quick and, um, and just kind of used over and over. Uh, I think a good worship example is the Lord's Prayer. You know, at Centennial, just like many other churches, we might use the Lord's Prayer to finish the larger pastoral prayer uh, that's typically found within the middle of the worship service. And uh, that's a noble practice, but are we just saying the words or are we praying the words? I think a similar thing can happen maybe at our bedsides or when we lay down in bed or when we wake up in the morning, you know, Lord, be with me um, and just forgive me for my sins. In Jesus' name, amen. You know, and, and that's a really good prayer. <laughs> it's a great prayer. But as you do that day by day over and over, and then I might ask you, well, could you pray longer than that? And you say, well, I want to, but I, you know, I don't know how to do that, or I feel like I maybe am just talking about myself and, you know, what do I do, right? And I think that that's where we forget that we have a lot of resources given to us by God in his word, the Psalms being, I think, the foremost, and yet also the prayers of the saints uh, being those examples as well that we can find in the scriptures of, of, of humans interacting with God and then of of us recognizing that we can rightly replicate that, that we can be ones who are praying those exact same words that are allowing our minds that have been informed by the Holy Spirit, that have been transformed by the Holy Spirit to, to take God's word that he has given to us and then to, to give it to him in a way that is revealing who we are while it's revealing who he is. And I know that sounds heady. I know that sounds maybe super spiritual, but we are super spiritual. Each of us who are believers and followers in the Lord Jesus are super spiritual beings who have been blessed by God to be able to maneuver these things. And, and maybe you've just never tried that. Or maybe you have and you fell off and, and you're thinking, well, I want to try again. This, this is a great moment to start to think Maybe I will open up the Psalms. Maybe I will just see what Psalm 1 verse 1 leads my mind to, and I'll pray something about that, and then I'll read verse 2. Uh, let it be organic. Let it be, dare I say it, relational. Because if you think about speaking to God, that, that is a relationship. This is not some kind of um, ritual a moment where we're like summoning up some spiritual power or something. No, it's because of the spiritual power that resides in us by God that we are able to just have a simple relationship with him uh, that looks like conversing. That is a, that is a true, uh, a true speaking uh, that is being heard. That's incredible and, and something that you need to think about uh, if you haven't before. Uh, just to finish this video off, uh, I want you all to remember that there's also an emphasis. Who or what can I pray for today? Today's emphasis is your community's spirituality, parentheses, enemies too. Write this down. How can I pray for those I interact with on a day-to-day -day basis? You know, as you think about what to pray for, you know, sometimes you think, ah, you know, I might be praying the same things or something. This is a really good example. 
I, I would wonder how often you have been praying for your enemy's spiritual well-being, uh, for those who are really bothering you and that you don't think, uh, I hope you maybe don't pray this, but you don't think, you know, ah, I just wish I didn't have to deal with them or something like that. But instead of that kind of gut reaction that comes from the flesh to say, Lord, how might I be one who shows Jesus to him or her? And and how can we in humility begin to pray and open up our prayer time to something like that? That's a big deal, but it might help as you think about, well, how do I pray? Look to the word. Who do I pray for? You could pray for yourself. You could pray for your community, which includes your enemies too. That's a lot of content. And, and I think that if we start there and we start to see that this is a bigger this is a bigger part of our lives than we give it credit. I think that's where we can start to really maneuver and exercise our spiritual lives. Think on these things, consider them, reach out to me if you have questions, reach out to Rebecca. Uh, know uh, with no jokes at all that I'm praying for you as you seek to grow in prayer. Be blessed today.